my name is Amanda and today we are going to be doing another TikTok reaction video because my sister-in-law so kindly put them together for me so that is what we are going to do today because it's fun and people seem to enjoy these and sometimes you just need to laugh at the situations that are going on so we are going to be enjoying some of these TikToks. So just a reminder, this is all in good fun. So if any of your chronic illnesses or disabilities or handicaps come up in this, I am not making fun of you at all in any way. It is just in good fun and we are just having a good laugh. So let's get started watching these videos. <laughs> Um, yes, I, <laughs> I feel this in my soul. Um, when you are in a lot of pain and you are used to being in a lot of pain, when something else happens that takes your mind away from whatever is going on, <laughs> you feel so much better, but yet you're still in horrible pain, but it's just not the normal horrible pain that you're used to. So it's like, oh my gosh, I'm not feeling it. Which is one reason why, uh, like, if I really need to pee, sometimes I regret going to the bathroom because the intense need to pee is covering up the endometriosis pain that I have. So, yeah, I, I know this. I know this very well. <laughs> Just like his wife and she was <laughs> yes this happens almost every time I go to the doctor which is why I try to avoid the doctor like the plague because I know that they are going to tell me that either I'm depressed or it's all in my head or prescribe some form of mood stabilizer when in fact I have you know my neck muscles can't keep my head up anymore and so my brain is squishing out of the base of my skull. But no, it's it's technically in my head. <laughs> it is all in my head. But yes, that was my most recent one was the headache and the intense pain and the sobbing and all of that was, I was just depressed. Yep. Yep. I feel all of that. I feel all of that. The one that gets me the most is you don't look sick. I don't understand what exactly I'm supposed to look like, but I apparently don't look sick, so I can't be sick. No, there's no way. And that, I've also had you're too pretty to be sick, which thank you for calling me pretty. I appreciate that compliment but my looks have nothing to do with how I feel and uh, or you're too young to be sick age has nothing to do with it yeah yeah everybody talks about the free posters you get with antidepressant but I present to you chronic illness posters <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, so I have one medication that comes with this giant poster of like everything that could go wrong. And I have to get them prescribed, I get them in bulk. So I get lots of them together. So it's just so many of these humongous posters of, oh my gosh, and then if you get a new prescription, then the pharmacy will give you like a booklet of everything that could go wrong with it. Amen. Amen to this. I should put them on the wall and just have wallpaper of all of those posters.
when it comes to chronic illness, at first you're going to be, you're going to go through the grieving process of having a new illness that you don't know what to do with, and it's going to be hard, and I'm not going to say that it is ever going to become easy, but you are allowed to accept yourself for who you are, and you are allowed and you are allowed to be as fabulous as you want to be. And I really like that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yes, anything fuzzy, soft, comfortable. Oh, pajamas are the best. Fuzzy soft pajamas are absolutely wonderful. I agree wholeheartedly. Yes, I know that you want to be petted. Yes, distractions are like the best thing ever when you have a chronic illness. And find something that you really love and do it. Um, and if for some reason all the things that you really love are super active, find something that you can have a passion for that you end up just having to sit in your chair like mine is crocheting or sewing or I'm not very good at cross stitching like she does but I watch a lot of TV shows lots of documentaries a lot of murder mysteries so yes find something to distract yourself reading is also a thing I listen to a lot of audiobooks so <laughs> yes like every freaking morning that is me all of my illnesses i could be having the best sleep ever and having a great dream like last night i was a warrior and i was like fighting with double swords and it was super cool and then i woke up and i was like oh my gosh my whole body is breaking and all of my illnesses come flooding in and yeah mm-hmm you know, when you finally get to sleep and then you're woken up by your illnesses. That's just great. Death comment literally explains what goes on in my head. Like, it's so hard. Like, for example, like, this is just a complete example. So nobody come at me, whatever. Like, if I had one arm, that's classed as a disability, isn't it? Or if I had... If I was suffering from cancer and I was having chemotherapy, so I lost my hair, it's all visible, visible disabilities. People don't question that. They wouldn't walk up to someone and say, oh, well, what if you're hiding half your arm? Or what if you just shaved your head and you're pretending to have cancer? Nobody says that, do they? But because you can't see our disabilities, we have to justify ourselves. Like, I, I don't understand that. Like, you don't know us. You don't know what we deal with behind closed doors. So just because you can't see my disability, we always end up justifying ourselves. It, it is ridiculous and difficult, but you'll get through it. Amen to all of that. Um, it is really difficult when you have an illness that can't be seen. Um, I have caught myself trying to make my illnesses more visible so that I wouldn't have to explain myself to other people. Um, I don't really do that anymore. I'm more comfortable with my disabilities now than I was at the beginning. But in the beginning, man, it was hard um, because people would blame you for parking in handicapped parking when you know darn well you can't walk very far or you have a wheelchair but you look just fine. 
and um, it's draining and sometimes people that have invisible illnesses become um, agoraphobics because it's too terrifying to leave the house because you're constantly trying to tell people that you're sick and they don't believe you. I know that um, I do a lot of reenacting, um, uh, 1840s reenacting, and um, someone kept trying to get me to be in a parade and they wanted me to walk in a parade. And I was like, there is no way that I will be able to walk in a parade. And it's like, oh no, you're walking just fine. You walk around the encampment just fine. And I'm like, we're a really small group. And you know, I sit down between walkings and I don't really stand up much during the day, but you don't notice that because there's lots of people coming through and I'm doing the activities that I'm doing. And, um, and the person would not take no for an answer. And I finally, just told them I have a brain tumor, which I don't, but I told them I did so that they would leave me alone. And so it's ridiculous when you all of a sudden find yourself lying so that people will actually take you seriously. And I don't suggest lying about illnesses. Don't. Do not follow my example, okay? I know what I did was wrong. I'm just saying. He wouldn't leave me alone. Something about chronic illness that I don't think it's discussed enough is the reality that when you become sick or disabled, you lose people. Growing up, I worked with stories about people who like got a cancer diagnosis and then their partner left them. I never understood that until I became chronically ill, lost my best friends, and realized, oh, that's how that happens. This sucks. I know that being sick changes a lot of things. I know that I was sadder and more irritable at that time in my life. I was more passive aggressive because I was in pain and I was grieving. fun to just hang out with me in my house. But I think more than anything, a lot of my friends just didn't know how to handle this, which I can't blame them for. I mean, I didn't know how to handle it either. The difference is that I didn't have a choice. If this has happened to you, I want you to know that you are not alone and that this is not your fault. And if you have a friend who is nearly sick or disabled, I hope you know it's okay to not know how to handle it. But I hope they'll take this time to try to learn because you don't have to have all the answers. They just need you to be there. During a time when they need more than ever is just to know that they're not going through this alone and that you still love them. Very much like so. I lost a lot of friends when I became sick. Um, and I think one of the biggest things is that people don't know how to handle that you're sick all the time. And they think that they have to bring it up in conversation. And so they're like, oh, I don't know how to deal with being around a sick person all the time. But in all honesty, um, Unless you're having a really crappy day, which happens a lot, but unless you're having a really crappy day and you're just like snapping at everybody because that can happen, when you're in pain, you can be very irritable, like very irritable. Um, but for the most part, you just want to be treated like you were before you got sick. You just want to be the same person. You have the same personality. You have the same likes, the same dislikes. Even if you can't do the things the same anymore, you still like them. Like I still love hiking and I still love being outdoors. I still love dance. I love to watch dance. Um, I love all of it. I can't do it anymore, but I still love it. And so I still want to talk about it. I still want to be involved in it. And so what I always say is, how do you talk to someone that is now chronically ill the exact same way that you talked to them before? They're still the same person. This is a question for chronically ill people. Where's the weirdest place you've ever had to sit down? If you're confused about the question, it is totally not applicable to your illness, but this is for my people with POTS, my people with dysanomia. I know y'all have got some good answers. I've had like a lot of the classic situations, like someplace weird in a mall or a grocery store or whatever. But I think my absolute favorite was smack dab in the middle of U.S. Customs. I'm talking pop to squat right in the middle of the hallway. Right there. Middle of Customs. This is... In the middle of a bathroom. <laughs> That's my weirdest. It was a public bathroom. Um, and I was waiting for someone to come out of a stall and I 
was about to pass out and I sat on the floor in a bathroom, a public bathroom. So yeah, yeah. And I have done the store one. I have done the mall one. I have done all of that, but yeah, public restroom is probably my worst place that I've ever had to sit down. A couple of years ago, my cat got diagnosed with asthma, so she gets a puff from an inhaler once a day. First, you have to shake it and then put it into the spacer. She knows what's coming. She doesn't want it. Unfortunately for her, I care about her well-being, so here she is, getting ready for her puff. We fit the mask over her face, and then we press down on the inhaler, which dispenses the medicine into the chamber. I know she looks really uncomfortable, but I promise she's purring pretty much throughout this whole process mm -hmm. once we get going. There's a little flap in the spacer. You can see it moving, and once it's gone eight to ten times, we know that she's gotten enough of her medicine. We make sure to give her lots of pets through this whole process. Mm -hmm. She likes that pretty well. And that's it. She gets a treat. Yep. And some more pets. Yep, that is my Winston right there. Um, his is, uh, he, he doesn't take his inhaler every single day and it's not at a certain time. It's just when he's having an asthma attack. Um, so his obviously isn't as bad as this cat's because if you're taking it every day at a certain time, then you probably have a lot worse asthma than what Winston has. But his, he comes to me and asks me for an inhaler. And um, lots of pets. <laughs> it took a long time to get him used to the, the face mask on him. I actually crocheted um, a face mask holder so that his nose has something to sit in and it makes it much more comfortable and I can also take it off and wash it, which is something I really like. Um, but I always say people get, have gotten mad at me before because they look at pictures of me giving him his inhaler and he looks uncomfortable, but he is purring through the entire experience. Um, I mean, it's not comfortable to have something over your mouth and nose. It's not comfortable for anybody, so, um, but lots of positive reinforcement, lots of pets, lots of love, and they know that it's going to help them in the long run. And so, yes, right there. Cat chronic illnesses, right there. That's my Winston. He's licking his butt right now, because you know. I just wanted to come on here and say, it's okay to not be okay. Your 100% yesterday is gonna look different to your 100% today. And different still from your 100% tomorrow. It's okay. You're still rocking it. You're still doing amazing things. You're still gonna change your life and other people's lives if you want to. You can still accomplish all the things that you dreamed of. It just might look different. I think we need to be less concerned about the packaging of life more concerned about its contents. I, I can't stress this one enough. Just because you are in bed, just because you can't move, just because you're in pain, it doesn't mean that you don't have something to contribute to society. It doesn't mean that you can't find a way to feel useful. Um, and I think feeling and being useful is something that we tend to look at in in one way and one way only you have to be working you have to be busy 100 percent of the time you have to be like grinding yourself into the floor trying to make sure that you do everything perfectly all the time and it's a lie um you can still mean something to the world you can still be a part of the world you can still contribute in so many different ways and you just need to find what you yourself are good at and do that if you're not good at walking very far if you're not good at being athletic if you're not good then you don't need to look for ways 
to contribute using that. If, if you're really good at writing notes, write notes, send letters. If you're really good at drawing, draw and put it up on the internet so people can see. If you're crazy enough to put yourself on YouTube and make YouTube videos, then go ahead and be your crazy self and put yourself up on YouTube. You matter, you are important just the way you are. And stop looking at your life through someone else's lens. Look at it through your own. So if your victory for the day is getting up and making the bed, perfect, get up and make that bed. Or maybe your victory for the day is you actually get out of bed. Then, then good for you, you got out of bed. If you can't get out of bed and your victory is opening your eyes, then good job, you opened your eyes. So what I say is don't compare yourself to anyone else but yourself. And even then you can be very mean to yourself. So be kind to yourself and remember that you are important and you are worthy of this life. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you've got enough laughs out of it. I hope that maybe you got inspiration from it or maybe something hit just right and you were able to get the comfort that you need. Please remember that no matter who you are, what you're going through right now, you are valid and you have a right to exist. You are important and you deserve to love yourself. Know that there are people out there that care very deeply for you and have intense empathy for you. If you enjoyed watching this video or you learned something or you liked it or whatnot, go ahead and click that subscribe button and go ahead and click that like button if you did enjoy this video. Or maybe you just want to be part of the Manda's Musings crew. Remember to be kind. Kindness is free, so give it out to everyone and I'll see you next time. Bye. sister-in-law knows that I cry at everything. So mean. So mean. Yeah, are you coming to... You gonna come because I'm crying? Okay, come here. Yeah. You gonna come comfort me? Yeah. You're a good boy. Ugh, oh, and here they come. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. So, with the help of my fuzzy lumpkins here, I'm just going to say I really like that. Um, I love you, but you, you just know how to get hair everywhere on me. Especially when I'm crying, because then it gets stuck to my tears. Kitty glitter. Um. This whole crying thing is, is screwed up. Blink.